This is our first session now on uh, these two verses to complete the paragraph in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. So, 4, 15, and 16. But, and I'll go back and connect it to the preceding in just a moment, speaking the truth in love, that we might grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So, Father, as we attempt to understand the rest of the sentence that broke off here at the end of verse 14, and what it means to speak the truth in love, and what it means to grow up into Christ or for Christ. Be our teacher now, I pray. We want to be truth speakers, and we want to be loving people, and we want to be conformed to Christ, and we believe his word is appointed to that end. So come and help me and us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this but here shows that the clause that began with this so that here, so all of this ministry of teaching and body life, you might call it, is so that first we may no longer be children. And that verb right there, be, tells you that it goes with this so that, and now, no longer children, but, speaking the truth in love, that, and that's the second clause that goes with so that, so that we no longer be children, and so that we might grow up. So you see the alternative? So children, no grown ups, yes, that's the idea. Not children, but that we might grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ. That's the negative, don't be children, and the positive, grow up, be mature in Christ. Now, before we turn to that. Main statement there of verse 14, let's do speaking the truth in love, because when you have a participle like this, defining the grow up, it tells you some relationship, and I would suggest the how here. This is the the way that we grow up into Christ by speaking the truth in love. Now, there's several things to be noted about that truth speaking here. One is that we often, I think, out of context, at least I have very often, treated this speaking the truth as a disconnected statement about, well, if somebody's in sin, point out their sin. If somebody's in error, uh, point out their error. And it doesn't have anything to do with doctrine. This truth is just tell them the truth about themselves and do it lovingly. But that's simply not going to work in this context, is it? Because right here he's saying, I don't want you to be children anymore. And the problem with being children is being tossed to and fro by and carried about by waves of teaching, waves of doctrine, deceitful schemes of craftiness and cunning. Instead, speak what? Speak doctrinal truth here. It's here's the, here's the amazing implication. Shepherds and teachers, let's go back. Prophets, he gives, he gives apostles and prophets and evangelists. These shepherds and teachers here are to equip all the saints to do the work of the ministry. Well, that equipping is largely by teaching, and that ministry, therefore, is largely by speaking that 
truth that they got from that teaching to each other so that when you get here, speaking the truth in love that we, so that we are the speakers here, right? Are you with me? This is not pastors. This is everybody. Speaking the truth in love, we grow up. In fact, I'm reminded here of uh, Hebrews 5.12, though by this time you ought to be teachers. And he's talking to everybody. Though by this time you ought to be teachers. In one sense, all Christians become teachers, not in, in an official capacity, not in an authoritative capacity, but in, in this capacity. Everybody equipped by the pastors and teachers to minister to one another with the teaching, they should be speaking to one another truth so that we may all grow up. We grow up not just by sitting in church on Sunday and hearing pastors do good preaching and teaching, but we grow up by all of us speaking to each other. Here's what it says in Hebrews 3. Take care, brothers lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. Well, how are we going to take care not to uh, make shipwreck of our faith? Exhort one another every day. This is everybody. Everybody a teacher. Everybody speaking truth that we may grow up in every way. And lest we miss it, I might have left it too quickly. But exhort one another every day, as long as it, is called, as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That was the issue back here. Cunning, craftiness, deceitful schemes. That's why we need uh, not to be children, but to speak truth to one another. Then, just a little bit on the word love here. Since this is mainly truth about Christ, truth about the apostolic deposit back in verse 11, we should observe that it is a loving thing, or at least this truth should be a means of this love. If you love people, you will speak gospel truth to people. You will speak the whole counsel of God from Scripture to people. You will take note of what the apostles and the prophets said and how it's been written down in the New Testament, and you will try to understand it and then speak it to each other. That will be love. And when that happens, we're going to see this next time, all of this interworking of the body will happen, and it will happen and build itself up in love. Not an accident that this begins here with love, ends with love, because Love is doing good to people, saving people, sanctifying people, preserving people, helping them along toward heaven, which is what this truth is for, that we may grow up. Now, the main clause, we might grow up in every way into Christ. This into him, ace auton in Greek, could be for him. Grow up in every way for him. That's the, the way it's translated over here in Colossians 1. By him, all things were created in heaven, on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. That's the very phrase that we have here in into him. But into him may be exactly right, meaning into his likeness. He's the head of the body, Christ, and we are growing up as a body to conform to our head. So into him, not in the sense that we aren't in him by virtue of faith, we are united to Christ by faith, but that union with Christ by faith means that we seek to be conformed to him, grow up into his image, into this mature manhood, this measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ in verse 13. So, the second reason that we do the church ministry the way we do it back here in this unit, the second 
reason. First, that we may no longer be children and thus tossed about by false doctrine, but that we may grow up in every way into him, and we do that by speaking doctrinal truth, biblical truth, gospel truth, beautiful truth, encouraging, life-giving, warning truth to each other, which is a great act of love. 